Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this diesel generator that was thrown in the scrap. Last video, we took it all apart and it put up a big fight. It was seized and we finally got the piston out of the cylinder. There's the cylinder and there is the piston. And as you can tell, it was definitely stuck to say the least. The rings are still stuck in those grooves. That's probably the next thing. So let's go get the, uh, the size of the piston cleaned up. We'll get some of that off maybe on a wire wheel and then kind of go from there. See if we could bring that back, possibly soak it in something. And we got to go look into the jug. We got to run a stone through there and see how that is and make sure there's no uh, cracks or anything to stop us from moving forward. Without further ado, let's give her. We got all the crap off the piston and the skirt looks pretty decent. A bunch of corrosion up top up here, but theoretically the piston really never touches the cylinder wall. It's not really supposed to. It's supposed to, you know, the rings are supposed to do all the work and then on the bottom end here's a, 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 a sheet of oil that lubricates that part of it. So I'm not that concerned about the damage that is up here, but what I am concerned about is we need to be able to get these rings to open up and uh, clean out those grooves because they need to uh, expand and stick to the cylinder walls. And right now, they're all just stuck in place. So I say we go back to the ultrasonic cleaner with the carb cleaner. We'll throw that in there. And let that cook for, I don't know, maybe an hour or so while we're doing some other stuff. We'll get on to maybe cleaning up that cylinder and the cylinder head and looking into the condition of them. Let's see what that cylinder has to offer. Now it's got a ridge right there where the rings are. I This very top half inch I did with the reamer, just not the reamer, the honing stone, just to kind of clean it up. I was trying to drive the piston upwards, but it wasn't having it. So right where that line is, is where the ring was. Well, actually the top of the piston. Let's go run a stone through that and then see how those walls clean up. And it's got some decent, decent carnage down below. Well, see what we get. She's gonna need a lot of love. I'm gonna go uh, work on this for a tad. <laughs> it's got a heavy ridge right there. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera. I'm looking at that right there, right where the piston was stuck. Yeah, about 10, 15 minutes later. It's looking pretty good. All except for that very top right where the piston was. Plus I kind of dug around there to get, trying to break the, the rust free. It was stuck down in that groove. I don't know how high the piston goes up. I would think on a diesel, we're going to go pretty high to the top of that edge. And it all depends on whether, uh, where the compression ring rings line up and if it maintains compression, it makes compression. It should be fine. 
rest of the drug looks decent. I don't see any cracks or anything. There's some staining on there, but there's no, no identical issues anywhere. I don't see. Last one we did, I think it was the rototiller. When I finally I cleaned it up, the cylinder was cracked all the way around right there. And that was the death of that one. Fortunately with the diesel, first of all, this is a sleeve. This right here is a sleeve to the uh, outer side of the cylinder. This is actually pressed into here and there's water jackets in behind it. Hey, right, what do you want to go screw around with now? Let's go take a peek at the cylinder head. We'll try to get the valves out of that and see what it takes to resurrect that and if there's any issues in there. And yeah, look at the cylinder head. So I do not have a head gasket for this. That's the biggest issue. And this one is still sitting on here. It's water cooled. We should still be able to get compression. Bolting it back down. The water jackets are not going to seal. I know that. Uh, we'll see what possibly even something kicks up in the comments. I did a quick look. I did not find anything for parts on this. But then when I go to put a video up, all of a sudden everything stirs up and you're able to get it. And that's not something we can go back to anyway. Just take the cylinder head back off, put a head gasket on it. We can run it without coolant for short periods. Because we still don't even know if the generator part of it is any good. Uh, as far as the valves are concerned, I'm going to go try taking a wire wheel. We're going to do our best to stay the color within the lines. And we'll get all this crap off of here. And uh, I'm going to see what the injector looks like to the... Well, let's get that cleaned up and we'll have a better answer in a second. I might have to turn the air compressor on. That might help. I'd say next we get that rocker assembly out of there and possibly get the valves out of it because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of corrosion between the valve seat and the valve. Come on. We still have to clean a carburetor. Diesel works off a of no spark, no carburetor. The idea of a diesel is when you squeeze air together, it gets hot. So if you squeeze it really hard together, it gets super hot. So the air is so hot that when you inject diesel into it, it spontaneously explodes. That's essentially how a diesel works in layman's terms. So no spark, no carburetor. Sometimes they're two stroke, sometimes they're four stroke. Well, they're all four stroke now for the most part, but they, they made two stroke diesels too. There we go. There we go. So I'm gonna go get a valve compression tool and we're gonna, it, it reaches around, it's like a big C clamp, reaches around, push it down on the valve and get these keepers off and get the valves out. It's been about 45 minutes. Let's see if we can take a quick peek at our piston, see how it's doing. I was hoping to see them just magically pop out on their own. <laughs> that top one looks like it might have moved a little. Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, let's go uh, actually put the basket back in like it should have. So they can get it out easier next time. There we go. Lay down. I said lay down. And I know you're a little bit in the shadowy, but this is essentially what it looks like it's a C clamp. And it's got a little half moon on the other side. And that allows you, hopefully, to clamp down. It holds the valve. And then she get the 
we have enough room. It's gonna be tight. I don't know if there's enough room to get that keeper out. And you take a magnet and you wiggle the keepers out, and then everything will be able to come apart. I don't think I have enough room to didn't drop down far enough for us. Let's see if I can push it by hand to get a little bit more access. Once you get one out, then you get the other out, no problem. It's spinning around. I gotta uh, reposition that. That's more than enough now. One. And you can spin it around to where you have more room to get the second one out. There we go. When we undo it, it should allow. Get everything right apart. That'd be the spring assembly. And then we should be able to push the valve out, depending on the condition of the valve. Yeah, it's not moving. So let's go get ourselves a little brass hammer. We're going to go tap on this, see if we can get the valve to come out. See if we tap it with a brass rod. Did it move at all? It did. The valve has opened some. She's rusty behind it. Right. A lot of times there's a valve seat on the very top. I've, um, Valve seal. Apologize. That seals oil from going down on the side and it usually sits right on top of the valve. I'm gonna go show you the other side of the valve we're working with. All the rust that was behind it. And see it falling down on the vise too. That actually looks like it's packed solid. Sure. Sleeping in some salt water probably for a while, huh? Alright, so I'm gonna try to get a punch to go in the center of that stem. You keep driving that valve the rest of the way out. And I'll have to go clean that up. Yeah, we still gotta do the same with the other one too. So hopefully this punch is slightly smaller than the valve stem. It looks to be by eye. See the other side coming out. Ding. My biggest concern is the condition of that seat. I'm going to go clean it up on a wire wheel, but this edge has to seal and that edge has to seal. If any of those are, are drastically compromised, then we're done. Throw that on a wire wheel real quick.
Ah. Yeah, that one. You got you got out easy on that one. That's because that's the intake valve. So I bet you the whatever, however the water got in this engine got in through the uh, exhaust. Let's go clean that one up. See how that one does. A little freehand can get you over the top. Let's go see what we got in here for crap. That's the intake port. Again, we're concerned about that seat right there. We're going to lap them in later. I'm just trying to get rid of all the credit. It's a hardened seat, too. It's not a. I mean, you don't want to go scratching across it like this, but it's. Like that. <laughs> Let's go pick out all the crap that's in there. I'm gonna take an air gun, blow some of the crap out. Work. Uh, probably take the wire wheel again. We'll work with the wire wheel. Try to get as much of this crap off of here as we can, and we'll see what these seats look like and, and as far as uh, pitting. I'll explain in a minute. So unfortunately, uh, you guys can see it right there. It does not look as a big corroded pit, corroded pit. And it's rough right there too. Oh, that's really rough. Let's go drop that valve in there. To the smaller of the two. Actually, I still may have to go clean up. Yeah, it's not gonna drop in yet. I got more cleaning to do. So you can get that valve dropped in there and we're going to do our best to kind of get the two of those to see if that won't see it's not going to hold compression that's the the biggest issue that we're dealing with right now and it's it's that edge that's on a 45 it's not the crap that's on top here that has all this damage that's all right it's this surface right here that we need to get this the seat on that surface right there Just a little something for lube. I hit it with a wire, the stem with the wire wheel again. There we go. Good. So we need to be able to make that and that seal together pretty good. And usually what you do, take what's called lapping compound. Lapping, lapping compound is kind of think of it as a, a liquid sandpaper. And you put it between the two surfaces then you would come with a suction cup, something like that, and you would spin the valve and try to seat those two surfaces. Unfortunately, I think they're going to be beyond that, but we're going to give it a shot, see what happens. <laughs> like my suction cup. <laughs> I'm going to go clean that off. And uh, I have, I had another tube of lapping compound. Actually, somebody sent me one. I'd be damned if I could find it. So we're going to go use what's left of this and uh, give it a shot and see if we can get a shiny circle to go all the way around. I don't think we're getting anything out of that. Yeah, I think that's all dried up. 
Come on, give me some. Give me some. Come on. Poop it out. <laughs> We're gonna end up cutting that container open. Doesn't take much. It'll work its way out real fast too. So you have to keep kind of feeding it back in the groove. But I think we're going to have to go more aggressive. Let's just see what happens though. Feed that compound back down into where it'll. The valve, I think, will be okay. Like you see a shiny ring. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. That shiny surface going all the way around. Right there, it's a little iffy. But if you watch his, uh, you watch his, if you watch Terrell. He um, takes some fine sandpaper and folds it on the, around the valve and then works the valve with the sandpaper to do a crude. I think we're going to go try that. The other thing too is you can take a drill and you grab the, this where the stem sticks out the other side instead of using this. You, grab, you put a piece of fuel line over the other side of the stem. You put it in a drill and you can spin it. Hear the sound change? It goes from a growly sound, which is the aggregate cutting. And what it does, is it pushes it off the surface to where it's not doing anything. Listen. Hear how it changed? And then it just, it works it all out of the way. So I'm gonna go clean that up. Even that valve's got some pits in it. But you can see that shiny groove. That shiny line that's in the middle. You kind of want to maintain that all the way around. Then you know you'll you'll get a seal. And what I'm concerned about is that part of it though. What's that gonna look like? And it does not look good, <laughs> I'll tell you. Again, we still got those big pits right there. So I'm gonna go get some uh, like wet sand sandpaper. We're gonna go wrap it around the valve and do a little towel, towel trick and try to work that sandpaper, have it kind of work on that seat and uh, clean up some of that surface. This is 600 grit. Let's start with that. And you're gonna want it, make it so we can get around the valve. some lube I could have went further with that cut so it does for us let's take it the head gasket wasn't there you have a better turn on it but again that stuck to it and we don't have another head gasket so let's go rotate that I'm going to do a bunch of that. I'm going to go come back and we'll see how our, how our seat's going to do. It's a little better. We'll tell when we put it all together if it's got compression or not, right? Well, I know for a fact that it's going to need more love than what we just did to it. So this... Unfortunately, it's all I have. Let's go load that up. This is pumice type of uh, hand cleanser. It's got an aggregate in it. And I got the 
fuel line on the back of the valve like I talked about earlier. I'm going to use that. I'm going to keep working that surface with it. Hopefully it should start changing color. We'll see the color change and know that we're uh, taking some material off. Pull the hose off. So I'm going to work that for a few minutes. I'll bring you back and we'll see if that makes any difference. So I worked that for a few minutes. I'm actually going to go try some uh, other ones. Hopefully find something that's just a little bit more aggressive. And uh, we'll run what we run, I guess. That's more like it. Now you can see actually a color change happening. The metal's kind of coming off. Shove it back up in there. goes so far the valve just goes right in <laughs> oops <laughs> let's see if we can get that take it apart we'll clean that up and take a, another inspection of that seat see how it's doing big pit right there Definitely better though, but the, the tell is going to be how the seat looks. Keep working it. As long as you feel we're getting somewhere, you know. I'm going to go take a closer inspection on that, see how it's doing. Well, after a thorough bout with the drill, the valve has a decent contact patch all the way around. It's rough. I mean, you look at all the pitting on the stem too. But my main concern is right there. You can see where it's, it became shiny all the way around, but right here, he's on the rough side. That seat's pretty bad. And again, right there. Down here, you can't really see it. This is good all the way around, but right there, it's beat, and right there. Intake. Intake valve looks much better. Intake seat looks much better, but it does still have some pitting going around it. Again, this thing was full of rust. So I think we're gonna go hope for the best with them and see if it makes compression enough to run. Because we still have other stuff to deal with that could be possibly taking us out of the game. So what's the sense of rebuilding this if we can't get the rings out of the piston? Uh, I'm going to go try to make this as level as possible. Maybe we'll, we'll set some gasoline on here and we'll see if uh, it goes past the valve real easy or not. With the spring on, it helps a little bit better. It gives you a bit more pressure on the downside. But we're going to leave with the springs off, fill them up with gas, and just see if it, it uh, flows right through there real quick or if it, uh, if it sits on top. Again, there's no spring holding them down, but it kind of gives you an idea. It's slowly going down around it. You can see it. Actually, it's not terrible. I expected it to really be worse than that. Again, that's with no spring holding it down either. You got to think of how fast that piston's moving. That it's squeezing that compression up. Squeezing it together real fast and back. How much time it has to go leak around it. So, we'll see. We'll get that piston that is buzzing in the background. See if we can uh, get those rings free. That's the next uh, obstacle we need to get over. Ooh, 
that's warm. Let's go over the bench, see what we can do about trying to get those rings to, to pop back out. And our next challenge is to try to get those rings to move. I think a little smaller punch when we get down in that groove. You guys might have to suck it in. I might hit you in the belly. I can get a tinier punch. I can get dropped down in that groove a little bit more. I thought the larger one surface area would have helped us. That is not looking good. There's another one over here. Let's try seeing if this groove will move. Saw something wiggle over there for fluid, fluid wise. Let's see if I can uh, kick you over this way. It's out the other way. That one actually looks like it came out a little. Probably means they're very brittle. So you have to be careful. But just so I'm not rushed on camera, you get the idea of what I'm gonna try doing. I'm gonna keep trying to work that, work that, see if I can get them to move around and get free. Then we get the rings off and, and clean the uh, extremities out of there. But I'm trying to work around you not hitting you in the stomach. So, I'll see you in a minute. Well, unfortunately, I worked my way down to the oil ramp. Maybe I'll just go start with that. And I was tapping it back and forth. And I got some movement out of each side. You'll see here that. You can kind of see where the ring is moving a little bit. And then going back and forth, I tap it back in. But on this side, it's over. I, I saw cracks appear on this side. Like I said, they're, they're super brittle. And that's just the nature of it. It, it uh is so rusted in there on the sides just like the sides of the pistons were this is uh, pretty much going to be taking us out of the game unless i'm able to find some other rings and i don't know if that's going to happen for us never know but like i said I, I, this thing is uh been a tad on the Reluctant to come apart side. <laughs> Just is what it is. Now, I'm gonna go screw with a little bit more. Let's go break these two. <laughs> but the oil ring is already out of the picture. So. And so if you look at the the rust that is down on the inside, it's the same as what was going around the piston. Not that we didn't kind of expect that, but I was hoping that we were able to get a little bit of movement out of those rings. Get them to spring back out. But unfortunately, what you would do is you put your rings on, and then there's a ring groove tool you stick in there, and it cleans up the, the surfaces. Yeah, well, I don't have rings. Watch like a VW piston be the exact same size. <laughs> well, guys, unfortunately, like I said, uh, we are without parts. Uh, I, I'll probably try to search a little bit more and see 
if something can come up, if we can get a set of rings for it. And, and who knows what the condition of the rest of it is in also. So I don't want to invest hundreds and hundreds of dollars in something that the generator part of it can be no good. And we have a, a diesel with a tapered shaft running kind of half-assed with a bunch of corroded parts all for nothing. We started out trying to figure out just what happened to it. And my guess this is my guess. You're welcome to go put your input into it also but i think probably either the head gasket failed or something happened in the exhaust system that it plugged up and it allowed the cooling water to back up into the compression chamber um, and took it out possibly maybe a head gasket I, I would think a head gasket would kind of be less i think possibly it like I said, maybe filled up the exhaust and backed up or, or whatever the boating situation it was in. It could have been something that, you know, started to go down and it pushed up through the exhaust and filled it up. I just don't know. Anyway, this is a bucket of evapor rust, and I'm going to go throw the piston in there. We'll let that soak for however long. If in the odd chance that those rings do come back, there's a slight possibility that we can run it without the oil ring. It'll smoke like a pig and Maybe not even be able to shut off because it'll run on its own oil. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's a long shot. I'm going to just go throw this in the bucket. We're going to let it sit over on the side for a while. But uh, sometimes this doesn't work out like you planned. I tried. I gave her what I, I thought I could do. But between the valves, going to be having an issue. The cylinder having that score line going around it. The ring's not wanting to come out of the piston. It um, definitely is trying to put up a fight. I also don't even know if that injector works, if the injector pump works. So that's it. Till the next one. <laughs> I guess I'll see you later. Thank you all for hanging out. Do a little bit of wrenching on uh, rusty old junk, literally rusty old junk. And uh, hopefully our, our outcome is a little bit better next time. Till then, I'll see you. Bye. The other thing is that oil ring could have been busted. Just from us pressing it out too, it already could have been broken in those pieces. Just trying to make myself feel better. Let's go see what the diameter of that bore is. Is that three one five? Three inches, one hundred and fifty thou. And just in case, it's been sitting for, I don't know, two days now. Let's go and see if we have any fighting chance on those rings still coming out. Because you still have the capacity of making compression. Just not squeezing the oil back down below where it's supposed to be. So let's go pop that over in the vise. See if there's a chance of uh, tapping them out without breaking them. Not giving them much hope, but Actually, does it look like that ring is sitting out more than it was? Hmm. Not looking good. So it's two weeks in the future and I've had this soaking in the evaporust that whole time and I kept trying to get the rings to move, tapping them back and forth. And I got a little bit of an air gap going in there. Not much. You can see the ends of the rings are actually kind of busting away because they're very brittle and do not uh, like getting tapped on very well. But one thing that uh, definitely reared its head is there's a crack in the piston going all the way from there across and down. So the ring land is probably collapsed onto the ring from this uh, section, moving down and taking it out too. Not positive of that, but that piston's junk also, unfortunately. So she's gonna need a few pieces if it ever comes back together.